that are watching this video, you already know who I am. I'm Professor Tangie Christmas at St. Clair County Community College. And today I'm gonna to talk with you about how to develop and maintain proper posture. Now, if you are in my class, you were given this handout that has two sides to it. It has handy dandy little links on one side and it has some pictures on the other side dealing with diaphragmatic breathing. We're just gonna deal with what's on the front side so that we can ready you for uh, an, an, an in-class exercise that will help reinforce your understanding of posture. When we talk about posture, posture is key because the platform through which you deliver your speech is maintained and your energy level is managed through what you do with your posture. Think about it like washing a car. If you're prepared to wash a car and you gathered all of the, uh, the materials needed, but then when you went to turn on the water spigot, no water came out, what would most likely be your diagnosis of the matter? Well, one would assume that there was a kink in the hose. Okay, now it could be your playful cousin hoping that you will put the, the end of the hose up to your face uh, uh, in time for them to jump off the water hose and give you a nice little spray. But if you don't have a playful cousin, cousin chances are there's another reason for that kink in the water hose. And if you're not going to uh, make much process, progress until you go and address that matter. Well, the same thing holds true with public speaking. There are many things that I want you to do vocally and that I'm asking you to do with your body that you simply won't be able to do until we get the kinks out, as it were. Now, I refer to proper posture as triple threat posture. Triple threat posture is the term is used because there are three threats that a speaker has available to them when they execute a proper posture. The first threat that they have or resource that they have is basically energy management. A person who's in proper posture has the position, has the option to stand stationary for a long period of time and experience minimal fatigue. Now when you leave me, you're going to present some of you for longer periods of time. Uh, some of you may present for 45 minutes, others of you for hours, others of you may present a day long seminar or several, or seminar that expands several days. Energy management becomes a very important thing when you, in, when you think of it like that. And so, uh, in some instances, you'll have a lot of uh, liberty to move like we do when we present in front of the classroom, but in other instances, you will, you'll be required to, uh, a certain, to stay within a certain restricted area. In either case, the ability to manage your energy level so that you can get through all of your material in a quality manner is key. And if you're using proper posture, you'll be able to achieve that much easier. The second threat or resource that you have available to you is the ability to move whenever you want. See, a person that's all contorted and twisted in their posture is, is not likely to move from that position. Why? Because it just takes too much effort to uncontort yourself and stand straight. So usually they stay contorted throughout the presentation and the effectiveness of the presentation is diminished because of it. The third threat or resource that they have available is the ability to gesture when needed. Your hands are a very powerful resource, and we'll talk more specifically at a later time about how to make use of your hands and, um, when you're giving a presentation. But one thing's for certain, if when you're presenting, your hands are restricted because of poor posture, then the ability to utilize them to provide a clear understanding of a, a matter is taken away from you. And so proper posture gives you these three threats the ability to, uh, to ma maximize your energy, the ability to move, and the ability to gesture. All right? Now, you should have, in hearing that, started to fill in the first three spaces here. But let's talk about the other parts, or the other characteristics of triple threat posture. When a person is executing proper posture, there's certain things that exist. I'm going to bump up the, uh, the, volume, uh, the uh, viewing here to make it a little clearer for you to see. Okay. But if you still have trouble seeing it, let me know. And when we get back to class, I will uh, provide you with the handout and hard copy. Okay, here are the characteristics. I refer to 
these factors as the head, shoulders, knees, and toes of a good triple threat posture. Let's start with the head. The first thing you want to do is keep your chin level where it's parallel to the floor. If, you, if a speaker uh, has their chin above the parallel level the majority of the time, then they tend to send out a message that they are talking down to their audience. And so arrogance and um, snootiness is, are descriptors often used to describe this, the style of the speaker that presents above parallel level. Uh, a person whose chin is dipped below that level is seen as being insecure or uncertain. One student said it's like they have no backbone. So you don't want to send out that secondary message. Um, you want to keep your chin parallel so that people feel as if you're looking at them and communicating with them. The second factor has to do with the front of your neck. Keep it loose. Be aware of uh, not, uh, be aware of how you're extending your neck. Don't get into the ostrich effect. Just keep it straight and loose with your chin nice and parallel and people will find it easier to receive your message and you won't stress yourself, your structure so much. Once we leave the head, we go to the shoulders. Your shoulders should be relaxed and even with a nice downward slope. We don't want to get into a stiff presentation where we're trying to salute because that creates stress in the shoulders and oftentimes it comes across as being unnatural or uh, very rigid or uh, overly formal, okay? So keep those shoulders even with a nice relaxed downward slope to them and you'll be fine. Your middle back, which is the next level, that should be straight. You want to keep that nice and straight but again relaxed. Be careful of stiffening up and uh, pushing out your chest. Don't, don't lean back as it were, because all of these things create tension in your body, but also they take away the naturalness of your presentation. So keep your back straight and loose. Now we've taken care of, that takes care of the shoulders. Let's start to deal with the hips. You want to keep your weight evenly distributed on both feet. Evenly distributed on both feet. As soon as weight starts to rest, on one side of the body or the other side, you start to have an energy drain. And this type of energy drain will cost you if you're in a long presentation. It also starts to look awkward as you start to shift back and forth. You, uh, the random shifting serves as a deterrent or a dis uh, distraction for your audience. So keep that weight evenly distributed on both feet. Now this will be easier to accomplish if you're managing your feet uh, well, but we'll get to that in a minute. The next thing you want to do is keep your knees straight, but loose and unlocked. Please write this on your form. Do not lock any part of your body. As soon as you start locking up elbows and knees and shoulders, you start, uh, your, your muscles start to tense and you're getting in a, to a situation that's unproductive for your energy level and for your effectiveness as a presenter. So keep those knees straight, but don't lock them back. That's not what we're going for. And then lastly, you want to get to what you do with your feet. Your feet should be shoulder width apart. I don't want that base too wide. I don't want legs crossed. Uh, your toes, you have to make sure your toes are straight and that they are pointed in the same direction as the rest of your body. Okay? If, you, if you do this, you're going to find that you maximize your energy and you keep all three threats available to you. Now as a last effort, I want to show you some common problems that people have when they, when they um, try to give a presentation in hopes that you will stay away from these things. Please watch crossing your legs. Watch having your base too wide. These things make you unstable and oftentimes will result in kind of a toppling effect. Feet that are too close also give the teeter-totter effect, okay? Feet that are uneven and lunged create an imbalance. When you are out of balance, a lot of times the threat that you lose first is your gesturing because your hands will make an effort to uh, balance you. And so instead of you being able to use them to gesture, they're too busy trying to hold you up. And if you're still trying to use them, it's in a very restricted fashion. So keep these things in mind 
and we will talk about posture more as we go through an exercise that I think will, uh, will further reinforce this if you're in my class. If not, keep these things in mind and I'm certain they will help you as you work to give a good presentation. Thank you.